Today we will be using an issue of Urban Studies to demonstrate the different parts of an academic article and why the peer review process is so important for your research. Although people have been reviewing each other's work since before the Common Era, it was after the printing press that the concept of editorial peer review came to be. While the majority of scholars date the advent of peer review to the Royal Society of London's Committee on Papers in 1752, there's recent scholarship that argues other royal societies had similar systems in place a hundred years earlier. You can learn a lot from the first page of an academic journal article. The title should describe what the article is about and the scope of the vocabulary. Second, you'll learn about the author and why they're an authority on the topic covered in the paper. Third, the abstract provides a summary of what the article is about, helping you decide if it's relevant for your research. On the first page, you should also see date and volume information, which tells you when the journal article was published. At the end of a scholarly journal article, you'll find a conclusion that summarizes the findings as well as suggests gaps and areas of further research that can be explored. Scholarly research isn't created in a vacuum, so you'll notice a long list of references at the end of an article. Because this research is based on an extension or fills gaps within an established area of research, you'll notice that each reference listed corresponds to an in-text citation in the body of the paper. The peer review process is one of many submission guidelines, which essentially requires that any article submitted to this particular journal is reviewed by other experts in the field who will suggest certain edits are made before the article can be published and read by you. Peer review, preventing scholarly embarrassment for four centuries.